Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board, citizens, thank you for the a chance to talk a little bit about uh, coronavirus. I've given this presentation uh, to several boards and councils, and every day it changes a little bit. It's not quite the same each time. But I want to take about 10 minutes just to, I'm going to move this just a bit, if you don't mind. Move it any place you'd like. <laughs> that way I can control the slides a little better. To give you an update on where we are, so <clears throat> everybody's heard about the coronavirus. You've heard a lot about it. Um, some of it's true, some of it may be overplayed, some underplayed. Coronavirus is actually a family of viruses. There are seven of them we know about right now. Four of them just cause common colds, and we've, they've been around since the 1960s or so, and they've probably been around a lot longer than that, but we discovered them in the 1960s. There are three others that cause more serious illnesses. One caused the, uh, the SARS outbreak, acute, a severe acute respiratory syndrome back about 15 years ago. <coughs> Pardon me, that was also in East Asia. Uh, another one causes the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Again, you may have read in the news about people uh, going to the Hajj in Saudi Arabia, getting very sick and a substantial number of them succumbing to the, to the disease. So this, this virus that we're facing now, which we're calling coronavirus, is actually the seventh subspecies. It's similar to the SARS in its structure. It's actually called SARS-2 uh, officially, but We've, we've abbreviated by calling it COVID-19. So it's coronavirus, coronavirus disease hyphen 19, and 19 is for the year that it was first described, which was December of 19. It typically causes more lower respiratory symptoms, so the chest cold type symptoms, the cough, um, and sometimes shortness of breath along with the fever. And the, uh, the symptoms can vary a lot from a common cold to something much more severe. First identified in, in China back in December, not sure if maybe it had been around longer than that, initially was blamed on an animal market. Uh, not quite so clear again what the source is at this point. However, it be rapidly became clear that this disease spread in a person-to-person -person manner, much like a cold or the flu. <clears throat> Pardon me. Since China is the center of a, a thriving world economy, there was a lot of travel. Of course, cases were eventually exported uh, and, and caused local spread in other locations. First American case showed up 21 January. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak of public health emergency on the 31st of January, and two days later the president limited uh, people coming from China who were not American citizens in the attempt to at least slow down the onset of the disease, although of course it's impossible to stop it. There was subsequent spread to quite a few other countries. I used to name them in this presentation, but there's so many now that there's too many to name. Person-to-person -person spread and community spread, which is disease appearing without an obvious source, has happened in the United States. Uh, within the last week, we've seen cases in Virginia. And since I updated the slide this morning, there actually was a ninth case. So there are now nine positive or presumptive positive cases in the state of Virginia. None of them are in the Shenandoah Valley right now, but it's only a matter of time. How is it spread? Since this is a new virus, we don't know everything we'd like to know about it. We are, we are pretty much certain it's spread through aerosol. So you see that kind of disgusting picture of the person that sneezed without covering his mouth. Uh, first of all, that's a good reason to cover your mouth right there. So if a person sneezes or coughs, doesn't cover their mouth properly, they expel this cloud of droplets into the air. The liquid pretty quickly evaporates and what you're left with is essentially a dust cloud and each little particle is teeming with viruses. And if a person walks through that, inhales it, they get sick. The other thing can happen is a person can sneeze on a surface. I come up, I touch the surface, then I touch my eyes, nose, or mouth, I get sick. Colds and flu spread that way. We believe this virus does as well. The time from the infection, the uh, time from when the person gets infected till symptoms show up, usually about five days. It, it can range from two to 14. That upper limit 14 is the reason why when we ask people to self-quarantine after an exposure, if they're not sick in 14 days, they're probably off the hook. They're not gonna get sick from that particular exposure. Uh, but typically it's around five, five days, seven days in that range. 
Symptoms may include and often do fever, cough, shortness of breath. Not so much the head cold, more the, more the chest cold symptoms. Severity ranges widely. We believe there are some people that don't have any symptoms at all. Others get common cold symptoms. And it goes all the way up to a life-threatening pneumonia with some fatalities. You've heard a lot in the news probably about the so-called case fatality rate. That's simply the number of deaths in an area during a certain time period divided by the number of cases in that same area, same time period. If you look at the recent world totals, the rate is running around 3%, maybe a little higher. The, the problem is most places are measuring only the more severe cases that come to their attention, the ones that end up in the hospital. So if you have, for example, in China, they've had about 80,000 cases of this, and they've had uh, in China probably around 3,000 deaths. If you do the math, that comes out to a case fatality rate of around 4%. The problem is if you've only looked at the more severe cases and you haven't looked at the mild ones, you don't really know what the denominator of your fraction is. So if there's 80,000 severe cases and there's 800,000 mild cases, which has been seen in other countries, that kind of ratio, all of a sudden your 4% drops to 0.4%, which is a little more like a flu season. 0.1 to 0.2 is typically what we see in a flu season as far as a case fatality rate. So we're not really sure how many mild cases there are. We don't have enough test kits right now to test everybody. I will tell you that South Korea has been, um, been testing just about everybody they could lay their hands on who they thought might have been infected, and they've measured a case fatality rate of under 1%. It's about 0.8% right now in South Korea. So time will tell. Italy is having a horrible time. They're, they have a case fatality rate of about 6% right now. They've had... Uh, 10,000 cases recognized and about 600 and some people, actually 12,000 cases, 700 some people have died in Italy. So it, they're having a bad time with it there, not sure why. Most of the data that we have is from China. Another question is, will the disease behave the same way in people of European descent as people of East Asian descent? Probably, maybe, don't know. High risk groups, you're over 60, okay? I'm in the club. If you have chronic heart or lung disease, if you have diabetes, if you have any kind of condition that decreases the effectiveness of your immune system, cancer patients, people on chronic immunosuppressive drugs, say with rheumatoid arthritis, all those folks are at higher risk just from what we've seen. We don't know how much more the risk is, but it's there. So what do we do? <clears> hey, <throat> okay, wash your hands. Wash them early, wash them often. Wash for 20 seconds. People tell you to hum the happy birthday song twice. All I say is when you're washing with the soap, just make sure you get every surface on your hand covered, including between your fingers and thumbs, and then you rinse every surface on your hands, including between your fingers and thumbs. By the time you've done that, 20 seconds will have gone by. You don't have to hum any songs. <laughs> okay, just, just wash your hands well, soap and water. No quickie under here and you know out the door. Actually wash them. Pretend your mom's watching. No soap and water, hand sanitizer is, is effective uh, if there's not visible contamination of the hands. 60% alcohol is, is the recommended minimum. Most of the ones they sell in the store will be at least 60% alcohol, some of them are 70. A story I heard not too long ago was someone ran out of hand sanitizer. Believe it or not, they actually put vodka in their, their pumper bottle. Now, it's a problem, though. Vodka is only about 40% alcohol. So it's actually not strong enough. So hand sanitizer, 70%. Try to avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth unless you've just washed your hands. Okay. How many people here have ever worn contacts? Okay, you know you wash your hands really well before you put your contacts in because you've got to stick your fingers in your eyes. Same thing right now. That you don't want the germs in your eyes, nose, or mouth. If you're a person who tends to touch their face while they're thinking or sitting there Try not to do it. Try to be aware. Stay away from people who are sick. I mean, this is kind of a duh thing, but, but if, if you see someone who's obviously not well, give them six feet of distance at least. Um, maybe invite them to go home if you, they work for you. <laughs> consider, and especially if you're in one of those high-risk groups, consider where you're going, whether you're going into a place with a crowd. Maybe not the time to see a first-run movie with a crowded theater. Maybe not the time to ride the metro. 
if you're in a high risk group of course you know that's true all through flu season too if you're sick stay home stay home from work stay home from church stay home from the store stay home from your your community meetings stay home home get someone else to do your shopping for you um, if you're in a high risk group again you want to stockpile a little bit of food or if you think maybe you're likely to be exposed that way you don't have to go out quite so so often but don't hoard stuff cover coughs and sneezes don't be like that guy in the picture okay tissue cover completely pressed against your face throw it away wash your hands don't have a tissue crook your elbow press hard against your face it needs to stop the airflow from spraying out the old classic cough into the fist like this does absolutely no good <coughs> it sprays out in the air sprays all over the hand that you're going to try and shake hands with clean and disinfect commonly used surfaces these would probably be a, a good one to do after the meetings over or before tomorrow what else so be aware and take this seriously uh, the World Health Organization just declared this a pandemic what does that mean that means it's all over the world it doesn't mean it's going to depopulate the world it doesn't mean people are going to be dying in the streets it just means it's all over the world so the word pandemic although it does include panic in there we should not panic we should take this seriously but take it logically this is not Ebola Ebola kills about 70 percent of the people that get it it's not smallpox it's not black plague it's not the 1918 flu not unless it changes its character a whole lot very soon okay it is not one of those diseases but it is a serious illness and for the elderly for the infirm for people with immune disorders it can be deadly but so can the flu when do you seek medical care well if you have been traveling to a high-risk area and right now places like Seattle and New Rochelle New York are high-risk areas if you travel to any of those high-risk areas and you have fever cough or difficulty breathing it's time to get seen if you have any of the above symptoms and you have close contact with somebody who you know has the actual disease time to get seen if you have severe symptoms in that same constellation uh, the cough the fever the difficulty breathing regardless of whether you've had any contact time to get seen and again if you're in a high-risk group go sooner rather than later if you're going to seek health care and you think you might have COVID-19 please call first let them know or if you're pulling up to the ER have someone walk in and say got a possible coronavirus patient they'll come out they'll put a mask over your face and they'll escort you to a room where you're not going to share your disease with the other people in the waiting room okay. speaking of surgical masks they stop outgoing germs very nicely they do nothing to stop incoming germs and they're designed to keep the surgeon's sneeze out of the sterile wound on the operating table that's why they're there the only the tightly fitted custom fit ones will actually slow down incoming germs and those don't work unless they've been properly fitted so there are a lot of a lot of scammers on the internet selling those things please don't hoard stuff okay. people are buying toilet paper I'm absolutely befuddled as to why people are buying toilet paper <laughs> this is this is not a gastrointestinal disease at least not that we know about uh, besides being an in, you know, inherently selfish activity hoarding is also wasteful things go bad if you don't if you don't use them so so do do keep enough in your house so that if you can't go out for a couple of days you're going to be able to manage um, but don't hoard stuff please you know, get get two hand sanitizers not 20 leave the other 18 for somebody else so stay informed <clears throat> there's a lot of good information out there there's a lot of lousy information out there anything that comes out of the CDC from the cdc.gov site you can pretty much take that to the bank and the nice thing about that site is as long as you stay away from the the uh, health care providers kind of medical geeky section it's all in plain English and and uh, in, in layman's English and it's intuitively organized too it's really very well done you don't have to memorize that that uh, address you just type CDC and coronavirus it'll come up other sites my own organization site Virginia Department of Health again VDH and coronavirus 
We have a good page, too, with a lot of links to the CDC page. If you're interested in, in uh, events outside the United States, um, who.int, World Health Organization, is a good one. Beware of anything ending in .com or .org or .net or .anything else. It might be all right, it might be not. Don't stay glued to the TV. Some of the talking heads are experts and some of them are not. Some of them might be experts on China, but they're not experts on medicine. So just be careful. Um, check the CDC page once a day. That's probably enough, honestly. And look out for the scammers. I did want to just try to put this in a little bit of perspective, too, as far as numbers. Worldwide right now, there are roughly identified 120,000 cases of this novel coronavirus. About 4,200, I think, people have died from it since then. That's worldwide. In the United States, we've turned up about 1,200 cases now, and we have, I think, 36 deaths. And about half of those were in one nursing home in the Pacific Northwest. Last, this past year, we had between 10 and 20 million cases of flu in the United States. Probably 18,000 people died from the flu. So 18,000 versus 36. 18,000 deaths in the United States versus 4,200 deaths in the entire world. Now, coronavirus isn't done. Its, its cases are still on the rise in a number of places. In Italy, it's still on the rise. Here in the United States, it's still on the rise. It's coming to the Shenandoah Valley. We're not done with it. So we'll see what it's like when it's over. But be aware. Take it seriously. Don't panic. And just remember, flu season's coming back next year. So please, every one of you get a flu shot next year. If you don't want to get something like the coronavirus, well, flu acts a whole lot like it. So I'm not sure when we're going to have a, an immunization for the coronavirus. It'll be months. It might be a year. We already have one for the flu. So come October, please do get your flu shot. 